Welcome back to part four in the how to create a game on Roblox series. Now in this episode we're going to be doing data stores so that we can save the player's currency so that in future they'll be able to leave the game, rejoin and then we can script uh, allowing them to buy different items in the game. But today we're going to be doing data store and before we kick off the video I just want to start off by letting you guys know that YouTube have now enabled channel memberships on the channel. Underneath this video you can see that there is a join button and a lot of people have been asking how to get the source code. So now the code is restricted to channel members only because what people were doing was they were coming to the video just taking the code and leaving so they weren't actually learning anything which is unfair because I've taken the time to create these videos and people are just watching them for five seconds and leaving. That's so if you want to get the source code you become a channel member and you also get other perks such as a badge next to your name in chat you get exclusive live streams a merch discount and much more so just a quick announcement about channel memberships let's get straight into part four so what we need to do is we need to go into the stats script over here and this is where we have our books where we actually create the currency and at the top here we're going to define the data store service so I'm going to say local data stores equals game colon get service data store service spell like this in pascal case and then we can say colon get data store and then in these brackets in speech marks we're going to say the name of our data store and that's going to be books data store you can call it whatever you'd like I'm calling mine books data store as it tells us what we're going to be saving. So now that we've done this, we're just going to uh, drop beneath the character added uh, event over here. And I'm just going to add a quick comment saying data stores. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called player data. So local player underscore data. That is the variable which is going to store the results of what's in their data store uh, key, right? So we're going to we're going to take their key if they've got one. Now a key is what's used to look up their data and get their that specific data for one player. And we're going to bind whatever comes back from that key, whatever result, whatever value uh, that data store gives us, we're going to put in this variable. But we're going to define it first in case there is no data there. So what we want to do is we want to do a p call here. And this will just, uh, so in case the data store fails, then the whole script won't error and we can we can carry on. Nothing's going to actually break. So we can what we can say is we can say player underscore data equals data stores and then we can say colon get async and then in brackets we're going to add their key now the key can be whatever we want but we have to include their user id so that it's unique and so that everyone has a different key so we can say player dot user id dot dot because we're concatenating it together with a string and that string is going to say hyphen and then the name of your data, uh, your currency. So in our case it's books but you could call it whatever you want. So it could be uh, coins, it could be points, whatever you want. But I'm going to keep mine as books. So we're just going to put that in speech marks here and a person's key might look something like this so that we have their user id and then we have books on the end and each player has a different user id so each key is going to be different and of course something could go wrong with get async data stores might be down or there might be some kind of error which is stopping it from getting the data so we wrap it in this p call function in case something goes wrong the whole script won't error and break down so now that we've done that what we need to do is we need to check to actually see if they have some data or whether they're a new player to the game because if they're a new player then we're going to want to give them a default amount of cash to start off with or books in this case so we're going to say if player underscore data 
is not equal to nil, so that means if there is something there, there's a value, there is some data already saved, then we're going to load that data in. So we can say player has saved data, load it in. So to load it in, we can just say books.value equals player underscore data because if there is some uh, some data stored in that player data variable then we can just set the books value to player underscore data let's just make books lowercase here uh, because we defined it with lowercase when we over here so now that we have loaded it in what if the player is brand new to the game and doesn't have any saved data well we can say else so if we go to this else here, we know that it's a new player. So we can give them a default cache value. There's either no data saved on this player. So we can say books.value equals, and then we can either give them an amount of cache right here, or we can set it to a variable, which I'm going to do. I'm going to create a variable called default cache. And then at the top of the script, what we can do is we can create another variable called default cache so local default cache equals and then you can set uh, an amount of cache which you want a brand new player to receive of course if you don't want any uh, cache to be given to a new player you can just set it to zero but i'm going to set mine to 10. so now that we have got the uh, the default cache for a new player what we need to do is we need to uh, well that's all of the loading finished we now need to work on saving the data and that can be a little bit tricky because we need to make sure that every player in the game gets their data saved because when the last player leaves the game the server will soon shut down afterwards so we don't want to corrupt any data or uh, make a player lose their data because the server shut down before it was able to save so what we're going to do is we're going to create another event we're just going to drop outside of the player added one here and we can say game dot players dot player removing colon connect and then in brackets we can say function and then in another set of brackets we can say player just your normal event down here and player is going to be the player that is leaving the game because player removing fires whenever a player uh, decides to leave the game so just before they leave this event will fire so let's drop a line and roblox have added in the uh, end here so you need to make sure you've got the end with a closing bracket here and inside of here what we can do is we can do another p call function so p call and then in brackets function just like an event and make sure to add an end here with another closing bracket. And so inside of here, any code, if it errors, it's not going to break the entire script. So in this case, we want to say data stores, colon set async, and then in brackets, we can say player.userID, and then we want to concatenate again, because we're getting their key, and we want to save a specific value to this player's unique key so that we can get it when they next join the game so we're going to say player.userid and we want the key to be exactly the same as we set up here so we're going to then in speech marks say hyphen books so that we have the exact same key uh, looks like i made the d for data stores capital so make sure that's lowercase so that it's in line with how we defined it at the top here and we also want to then we want to give the data which we're going to save so to this key we're going to save the player's books so we're going to say player dot leader stats dot books dot value okay now we saved the books in the leader stats which is why we're saying player dot leader stats dot books and then we're saying dot value because that's the number of books they've got and we're assigning that to that key so we can save it so we should have, that should have saved the data. Let's just add a little print saying saved and hopefully everything went, went well. 
And what we want to do now is, so that will save the data if a player leaves the game. But what if this player is the last person in the game and the server shuts down uh, before the data is saved? We don't want that to happen, so we're going to use a bindable event and we're going to fire that when we know that the data has successfully saved and that will tell the server that it's all good to shut down. So to do that, we're going to create a bindable event okay um we're going to create it in our script so we can say local bindable event i'm going to uh, i'm going to define it outside of the player added function just before our player removing uh, event and i'm going to say equals instance dot new bindable event now, I'm not parenting this to anywhere because we don't need to do that. We're only using this bindable event to make sure that the game is okay to shut down. And what we're going to do is we're also going to create another variable at the top of our script called local players left. Now, you'll see why we're doing this uh, in a minute. But essentially, what we're doing is we're keeping track of players still in the game. And if there is one player, if, if there's no players left, in the game then we're going to uh, wait for that bindable event to be fired and when it is fired we will know that the game is able to be shut down safely without any data being wiped so we need to increment the players left uh, variable when a player joins the game we need to add uh, one to that value because a player has just joined the game and if somebody leaves the game then when their data has been saved we can subtract one from that value and then when it gets to zero we will know that all players have had their data successfully saved. So because set async yields and the script won't continue until the data has been saved what we can do is we can go over here underneath the print saved as we know that the data will have been saved we are able to uh, decrease the players left variable by one so let's go ahead and do that now players left equals players left minus one and then we can fire our bindable event and in a minute, we'll do our bind to close event, which is going to be triggered when the game is ready to shut down. So we can say bindable event, colon fire, and that will fire off our event. And we're now going to go ahead and pick that up in the bind to close event. So let's just drop a couple of lines and we're going to say game colon bind to close. And then in brackets, we're going to say function, another pair of brackets, and drop a line. Let's just zoom in here. So we have got our bind to close. This is going to be triggered whenever the game gets a signal to shut down. So this will be triggered upon shutdown. So just before the game is shutting down, anything inside of here will uh, will be executed and it will prolong the game from shutting down so we want to make sure that all players data is saved so if there's more than zero players left we need to make sure that the data has been saved so we can say while players left is greater than zero do now this is a while loop it will run forever we can say bindable event Okay, dot event colon wait. Okay, and this is going to wait for that bindable event to be fired. This server's not going to be closed until we get that confirmation that the last player's data has successfully been saved. So that's all we need to do for the bind to close. So now all players' data should be saved, ready for, for the server to be shut down. And finally, at the top, of the script just underneath player added we can say players left equals players left plus one we want to add to that value whenever a new player joins the game so that at the end uh, we know that there is going to be another player whose data needs to be saved so now i'm going to publish the game and see if the data store works so i'm just going to copy the link and load into the game so you can see we are a new player to the game and we have been given our 10 books because no data has been found. So let's go ahead into the console and give us some cash so we can test to see if it saves. So we're going to go into the server, click on command line and we're going to say game dot players. I'm going to write my name in and we're going to say leader stats dot books dot value 
equals 900. We're going to leave the game and then rejoin and see if it saves. So here we are, we're joining the server and we should load in with 900 books. There we go, we got our books and they loaded in perfectly fine. So there we go, we have done data stores in our sword fight game and that was part four. We're now able to save a player's currency so that in future maybe they can spend it on in-game items. We can maybe add some purchasable items as well through developer products and game passes. So if you want to see those in the future, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you've liked the video and don't forget if you want to become a channel member so that you can unlock the source code and lots of other perks you can click on the join button right next to the subscribe button down below thanks for watching and have a great day